Welcome to the Cloud Health Platform Overview. In this session, we're going to provide an overview of the navigation of the platform. The first section that you see when you log in is the dashboard. The dashboard is broken down into four sections. We provide a more detailed look at the dashboard in another session, so we're going to move on down to the next section, which is the activity feed. The activity feed is a 24-hour log of any changes, additions, or deletions that have been made in your infrastructure. You'll notice that the activity feed features three different icons. The blue circle with a lightning bolt indicates if anything's been updated or changed in the system. The red circle with the X is an alert which notifies you if anything has been terminated or deleted. The green circle with the plus sign alerts you to when anything has been created or added to your infrastructure. To get more information, you can click on the View Details tab. This shows you the time of the event. Below that is a hyperlink, which you can click on to get even more information about that event. So in this case, you can see that the time this event occurred was at 2.03 p.m., and I can click on the link here to get even more information about that event. The next section is the Notifications section. This section gives you information about the policies that have been created. If you are unfamiliar with what a policy is, it's a condition-based alert which allows you to set up a warning or an action. This screen is broken down into three sections, Policies, Actions, and System. We're going to start with the System section. This is where you can get Cloud Health specific notifications. You can see any billing cycle completion messages, policy evaluations, and if you have the aggregator, it will give you aggregator alerts. The next section we're going to review is policies. Here is where you can get information about the policies that have been evaluated as true, which just means that the conditions for that policy have been met. You can see the policy name, a summary of the policy, when it was recorded, and if you want additional information, you can click on the I icon. When you set up a policy, there is usually an action that is associated with said policy, such as sending an email or terminating an instance. If we toggle over to the Actions section, you can see the requested action, the date the action was created, and the status of the action. The last section of this area is Pulse Reports. Pulse Reports are executive summary reports, and since they cover a lot of different areas on the platform, they are each talked about in depth in a separate session. We're going to move on with the rest of the navigation menu. The next section is the Multi-Cloud Report. This report allows you to see costs across all the clouds you have configured on the platform. We'll spend more time on this in another session, so let's move on to reports. Here you can see all the different types of reports broken down by focus area. You can look at metrics from cost reports, usage, performance, security, and more. If you expand to any one of these, you can see a whole list of reports that fall under each category. Under Cost, I'm going to select the Cost History Report. The Cost History Report is the same report that you see on the dashboard, but with two major differences. The first difference is at the top of the screen, you'll see some dimensions and measures that allow you to break down the information that you're looking at and view it in different ways. We'll talk more about this in just a moment. The second difference, if you scroll down to the bottom of the screen, you'll see a tabular view of the data. Here you can see the information that is graphically represented in the chart above, broken down numerically. Let's head back to the dimensions and measures. In the first section, under Filters, you have the ability to look at a specific area of focus. For instance, if I wanted to look at a specific account, I could click on the plus sign next to Accounts, and then select one of the accounts, and it will change the information that I'm viewing to reflect just the costs that are associated with that specific account. If I wanted to look at a particular owner, 
I could look at information for just one person, or I could select multiple people. You'll notice that some of these filters have the letter P next to them. That P stands for perspective. Perspectives play a huge role on the platform. They offer you different ways to break down your environment by splitting up your assets, resources, and workloads into categorical views. For example, if you work in finance, you might be interested in viewing data related to a specific cost center. If you're an engineer, you might be interested in looking at a specific environment, such as production or development. The perspectives allow you to create views that pinpoint the exact information you're looking for. Perspectives act as different lenses through which you can view information regarding your infrastructure. Next to the Filters tab, you can change the interval. You can set it to be monthly, hourly, daily, or weekly. You can change variables for the X or Y axes. Next, you can change the category. Here you have some pre-built categories, but you also have those perspectives available once again. So if I click on Environment, for example, it will change the view to look at all of the costs separated by the different environments. I could also do the same thing with Owner. I'm still looking at the same costs, but now I see the costs as they are associated with each owner. By using the Chart Type dropdown, you can choose between different chart types. So if you wanted to view the information as a line graph instead of a bar graph, you could do so here. Finally, the Options dropdown is where you'll go if you want to do any forecasting. If you've spent time and configured everything so that it creates a picture-perfect report, you have the ability to save that report. At the top right corner of the screen is the Actions dropdown. Click on the Actions dropdown and select Save As. Here you can give your customized report a name, a description, a location, and designate whether you would like it to be a public report that can be viewed by everyone, or a private report where you are the only one who can view the report. Once you save the report, it will appear back in your menu under Saved Reports, where you can manage that report. If you wanted to set it up so that you received an email of a particular report in a specified cadence, i.e. every day or once a week, you can do this under Subscribe. Note, you must save a report in order to subscribe to it. You'll see here the name of the saved report, and then I can select how often I want this email sent. I can set it to email me every day, weekly, or monthly. I'll choose weekly. By selecting weekly, you can also choose which day or which days of the week you want the report sent to you. You also have the option to have just the visualization email to you or the visualization and the data. You can have it sent to yourself. You can choose from a list of individuals by searching in the box, or you can manually add in email addresses of individuals by typing into the box. You can also choose what time you would like this to be sent out. Once you save that subscription, it will appear over here in the Subscriptions menu. And that's it for the Reports section. The next section is the Assets menu. Here is where you can see any AWS assets with drill-down capabilities, as well as AWS management services like Datadog, New Relic, or Wavefront. Clicking on AWS gives you more information about your AWS assets by providing you with line items. The next part of the navigation menu is the Recommendations section, and this is broken down into four parts. Savings Plans allows you to explore your Compute Savings Plan options. You can view your potential savings and discounts based on how they are influenced by the different AWS Savings Plan options. Reservations allows you to simplify the management of your environment by analyzing, modifying, and optimizing your reserved instances. Under the Analyzer, you'll see a list of all instances that are running, the number of reservations that are running, and some recommendations based on the analysis of your instances and reservations. 
the modifier shows all available modification options for your standard reserved instances and the estimated total monthly savings from those modifications. The optimizer allows you to build a quote to purchase through the platform or to download and share with your AWS rep. The exchanger is a tool that will recommend exchanges of your existing convertible reservations to help maximize the savings potential of your convertible RIs. Under right sizing, there are four pages, two of which are for instances and two are for storage volumes. Whether looking at instances or volumes, you have two viewing options. The difference is how they are organized by default. For example, the EC2 perspective right sizing automatically shows information categorized by perspective groups, whereas EC2 right sizing by instance will show all instances by default. Each of these pages will show the same breakdown of information. The first section is where you can see the battery meters and scores. It gives you a visual representation of the utilization or underutilization of your instances. If you scroll over to the right, based on the average performance of the metrics that we collect, we make a recommendation to downgrade or terminate. You'll notice that there is a recommendation over here, and then there's a recommendation savings. These recommendation savings are the same recommendation savings that you'll see in the Health Check Pulse Report. From here, you can also take action on the Action menu. The final part of the recommendation section is security. Here is where you'll find security recommendations based on AWS best practices. Finally, the last portion of the platform navigation is the setup menu. This is where you'll set up your accounts, perspectives, policies, budget, any users or roles that you have, organizations, and a few other things. When you first start using the platform, you will spend a lot of time here to make sure that you set things up the way that you'd like them. At the very top of the screen on the right-hand side, you'll see two icons next to your login profile. The bell icon shows any notifications in the system that haven't been read. If there are any app updates, you can click here to find out more information about those updates. The question mark provides links to our Help Center and support. Under the Help Center is a link to Cloud Health Academy, where there are more of these training videos. You'll also see links to our API guide, terms of use, and our privacy policy. Under Support, you can submit a support ticket or view any open tickets. Clicking on your credentials is where you'll sign out of the platform. We've reached the end of our navigation overview. Thank you so much for joining us.